Well, uh, first off, um, you know, I have to give credit to Arizona State. Those guys have a very good team. And, uh, you know, Bobby Hurley and his staff have, have done a great job in their four years that they've been there. Uh, they came in today and, uh, and really took it to us. Um, our 17 turnovers, as, as many good things as Arizona State does as a team, they're not a team that really turns you over. Uh, that's not the, the identity of their defense. But, um, you know, 17 really miscues led to 23 points. And, you know, for our team this year, one of the things we've done a real good job of is taking care of the ball. And regardless of who our opponent is, if they can get 23 points off of our turnovers, that's not going to be a good thing uh, for, for us. And uh, I hate to point just at one statistic because there's a lot of differences between the two teams in today's game. But I would say, you know, on their end, they had 17 turnovers, but they have the ability to kind of play through those turnovers and overcome them, whereas we don't. And uh, being able to play a game like this with 10 or fewer would have given us a great chance to win the basketball game. Um, also, Remy Martin, uh, he was the difference really in both games. You know, he had 31 points against us uh, at Arizona State. And, you know, today, you know, not only did he have 27 points, but, you know, he was 10 for 17, 10 for 17 from the field. And it's difficult to do as a point guard. He, he's really developed into a uh, special player. And I think it's a big reason why uh, they are where they are this season. They have a guy at that position that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with anybody. So uh, I credit them. And uh, I said at the end of the game, you know, our fans are amazing. Uh, they don't have to stick around for senior day. Um, they don't have to cheer. They could boo. They have every right to. Uh, they're used to seeing the best of the best. And uh, this season and today didn't represent the best of the best. But their loyalty is something that's uh, really unforgettable. And, you know, for, for me, coaching in McHale, it's, uh, you know, it's a responsibility. You don't want to let them down because uh, – of what they bring to the table, our fans. And, uh, you know, you feel terrible uh, after a game like, like today. And then you see them at senior night, and you feel even worse. Uh, so also, I, I uh, talked about Ryan Luther and Justin Coleman. Um, when you can say that a guy, that two people that have only been here for nine, ten months feels like they've been here for four years, that's quite a compliment. Uh, they are great kids, great people, believed in us in a very vulnerable time. And, you know, we're uh, forever grateful to them and their families for choosing Arizona. And uh, they've done just some great things for, for our team and, and for our program. You know, we had a regular season of 17 and 14. I'm not sure what, it, what the record would be if, if uh, one or both of those guys weren't here. So uh, I really... And proud of those guys, and they should they should leave here with their their head held high because they were responsible for a lot of good things this season. What made Remy particularly effective tonight? You know, he's good in every game. He's an all-conference player, and he got my vote. But you know, he he can score, and uh, a lot of his baskets come early in the possession, like a transition opportunity, and a lot of them kind of bail out Arizona State where he can score late in the possession. But he can get his own shot, and he can get other people their own shot. And that point guard position is important, and he's very good. You look pretty emotional up there. Uh, besides talking about those two seniors, I, do you have any doubts about your own future or the, the program in general? I mean, you know, the way, the way you work, that just sounds No, I'm, I'm not going to comment on that. You were already short-handed uh, today, and then you have uh, your two guards fell out. How tough was that down the stretch when you needed them the most? I mean, very tough. Uh, you know, I'm, it's probably my fault for bringing Brandon Williams in the game at the time that I did. You know, a lot of times in these types of games, you have to play to win. You have to roll the dice and give give guys, players, the opportunity to play with four fouls or play with two fouls in the first half. Um, but Brandon has struggled with foul trouble since he's come off his injury. And uh, not only did I put him in the game, but, 
you know, I, put, I, I gave him a clear out play on the first play that he was in. My thought process was, you know, Dort on their end had three fouls, uh, committed his third before halftime. And to be able to get a fourth foul on him that early or midway through the second half could have helped us. But uh, obviously uh, we got a charge and Brandon fouled out. In terms of Justin Coleman, you know, we had no choice but to leave him in and, you know, getting open on it wasn't even a press. 94 feet, offensive foul, I mean. It is what it is. Coach, if this team doesn't make a run in the Pac-12 tournament, would you think it would be good for the university, or would you consider it a potential NIT or CBI move? I don't think we'll make the NIT. It, it's changed from years gone by. I don't blame anybody in here to not know that because Arizona doesn't really go to the NIT. But you know, it's seated. There's a committee, and it's very difficult. You know, there's probably 12 to 16 teams that are right there on Selection Sunday and don't make it. But uh, I don't think we would get an invite. And, um, you know, for us, uh, our focus is on the Pac-12 tournament right now. And we have, to, we have to get through that. What would it take you to make that great run? Well, I, I think the number one thing for us is we're not going to beat any team if we turn the ball over because we have too many other problems. If you play with 10 or fewer, that's a great stat, and you can overcome some deficiencies. So I think rekindling our ability to handle the ball and play with single-digit turnovers, 10 or fewer, that's a big deal. And um, you know, I think from a defensive perspective, as the season has grown and we've gotten deep into February and March, you know, physically the size, the weight, the depth, it favors the biggest, strongest, deepest teams. I know that because we've been on that side of the coin quite a bit. Uh, and you can really wear down a team with a short bench or that are playing younger players or maybe physically that aren't as strong or as gifted. This year, you know, that's one of our problems. So, you know, being able to play without fouling and, and being really tough defensively, you know, it's difficult right now for us to, to get big stops. And uh, that combination of turnovers plus that makes it hard for us to win. Dribbling, catching, passing, decision making. Um, and we, we didn't have a good night in that department. Sean, you've had such great success here. When, you, when you're challenged to live on the court and you don't get the results you want, what kind of toll does that take on someone like you who's used to success? You know, that's the hard part about coaching. You know, it's, uh, it's easy to roll out there on senior night and you're watching your team cut down the nets and, you know, you see the great pageantry in McHale Center. Um, when things aren't going well, um, that's really, I think, the definition of coaching, you know, being able to balance both and uh, see things for what they really are. Most of the time uh, when you're winning or you, you, you feel like good things are happening, it's not nearly as good as it appears. And I think that, you know, in the situation we're currently in, uh, there's a lot of truth in that it's not nearly as bad as it appears as well. Uh, but being able to sell that to your team and, and everybody is uh, is part of the task of being a head coach, and it's not easy. It looks like you will probably play USC on Wednesday, not the way until Colorado just beat them. So any early thoughts on them? Haven't played that game? You know, it's been a while since we played them. I know Chase Jeter didn't play in that game. Uh, you know, we really struggled to score. They're going to play a 2-3 zone. And, um, you know, I think they have two or three players on their team who are really, really good. Benny Boatwright is outstanding. Uh, Rakasevich is one of the most improved players in our conference. And, uh, you know, those guys, they play with a lot of confidence. So we're not there yet, but obviously we would have to attack their zone and be successful on that end for us to be able to beat them. Is, did you mention uh, uh, Chase? Is he, about, is he back fully, you think, at this point as far as the group? You know, um, I wouldn't say he's completely back. He did the best that he could. 
you know, he didn't have an offensive rebound. I think you see he's not maybe rebounding as well as, as he did. But, you know, the, the injuries and the games can really take a toll on a guy. And, uh, you know, getting him as healthy as we can for Wednesday is a big priority for us. We need him to play well. And he had some good moments tonight. Uh, as a team, we struggled to get him the ball some. But when we did, and he had 11 points on four shots. Um, and Ira, same thing with Ira Lee. You know, Ira had three early shots in the game, and uh, he didn't get another one, which is, uh, which is not a good thing. Well, just curious, <coughs> the Pac-12 awards coming up, um, do you see any of your guys, do you feel like any of them deserve you know, a shot on any of those teams that are coming up? You know, I, I don't I don't know. We we can't vote for our own players, so we're gonna have to see who the other coaches in the conference voted for. But you know, when you win as a team, you you get a lot of individual success or uh, individual attention. And a team like Arizona State, Washington, have a lot of players that deserve these postseason accolades because of the winning record and some of the things they've done. Just your, your thoughts on the player of the year then? I mean, a lot of, there's a lot of speculation maybe Washington, some of those got Noel or, or Thibel split up with them. You know, I like Thibel a lot because I think he exemplifies their identity. He's just a terrific defensive player. And uh, with him at the top of that 2-3 zone, the way that he blocks shots, turns you over, how hard he plays. And then obviously he's a good offensive player. He's a senior. Uh, he has a lot of qualities that championship teams have in their best player. And uh, I would say that I could see him being the player of the year. Thank you for the